Hi, I have two goals for this video. The first goal is to familiarize you with the rendering settings of Blender 2.5. The second is to explain ambient occlusion, a powerful tool for rendering 3D objects more realistically. Even though I did this tutorial in 2.5, it should work in your version of Blender as well. Please note that this is based on a pre-alpha Windows version as of September 15, 2009. As such, everything is subject to change. However, most probably the basic user interface will not change that much. In addition, the renders can also change between this version and when Blender 2.5 is officially released because both of implementation changes and tweaks to the algorithm. We'll start with the default Blender 2.5 scene. The 3D window contains a camera, a lamp, and a cube in perspective mode. Let's render the default scene. The scene icon, a camera icon, is where the settings for rendering the scene are set. The default dimensions are 1920 by 1080 pixels at 25% of full size, which gives a higher resolution image with a lower size than the old default of 800 by 600 pixels at 100%. The default output is Portable Network Graphics, PNG, as opposed to JPEG. PNG is more of the industry standard now. So here's the default Blender 2.5 scene rendered. Note that the world colors have changed, which explains the change in the cube's background. The horizon colors are red 0.250, green 0.250, and blue 0.250. The old horizon colors were red 0.05, blue point 0.22 and green point 0.40. The zenith colors of point 0.1, point 0.1 and point 0.1 for red, green and blue and the ambient color of black, zero for all, red, green and blue, haven't changed. Now let's add a plane to our scene to show ambient occlusion. You need shadows to really see it. Remember to use shift at A instead of the spacebar to bring up the add object menu. Do Shift A, Add Mesh Plane. Position the plane below the cube by grabbing it using the G key and relocating it below the cube. Then scale it five times with right click followed by S followed by five and pressing Enter. Now the cube lies above the plane. Press F12 to render. You should see the cube casting a shadow on the plane. Now let's delete the lamp. Highlight the lamp, right click, and press X. You can't use the delete key anymore. And confirm the delete. Now when we render, all the objects are black. Makes sense, there's no light. However, the world colors render when there are no objects. So the render will display with the world color, except where there are objects. Now ambient occlusion uses the ambient color combined with a mathematical technique that darkens corners or areas hidden by other objects. The word occlusion is a fancy word for hidden. Go to the world buttons and find the ambient occlusion panel. Check the ambient occlusion checkbox, accept the defaults, and press F12 to render. In the older versions of Blender, you press F8 for the material buttons, then the world subcontext, you find the ambient occlusion occlusion panel, it's A-M-B-O-C-C, -C, and then click on ambient occlusion. So here's the first render. Now Blender uses the world colors to color the cube and the plane, and then renders a small shadow on the plane. The shadow is larger as the cube moves closer to the plane. This render took about seven seconds. Now the number of default samples is five, that basically controls the accuracy or the sharpness of the shadow. If you raise the sh samples up to 10, the shadows become crisper, but the render time is slower. This simple render took about 24 seconds, over three times slower. I will set the samples back to five. Sing, sing, 
testing. By default, ambient occlusion uses ray tracing, casting rays from each pixel of each object. If the ray finds an object before reaching the world, the pixel is darkened. The resulting shadows are affected by the closeness of the object. So go to the World buttons. If you turn off all the shading checkboxes, they're on by default, you won't get any ambient occlusion. The two checkboxes you need to check, buttons in the earlier versions, are shadows to get any shadow effects at all, and ray tracing. Now if you render with F12, you'll get uh, AO, which is shorthand for ambient occlusion. Approximate ambient occlusion is a way to get faster rendering with good AO effects, though not as good as ray traced AO. Turn off ray tracing, but keep shadows on. Then go to the World buttons and click Approximate, then Render with F12. Not as precise as an AO render, but the render time was less than three seconds. Approximate AO is a great choice for animation because of the tremendous savings in rendering time. Choose it while you're developing and turn on ray tracing AO on the final render. Add a UV sphere and a monkey to the scene moving them close to the cube and slightly above the plane. Press F12 to render. You should see shadows cast by all three objects on each other. Here's an interesting effect. Change the horizon color to a nice blue shade. Change the color to sky color from the default of white and press F12 to render. The scene is now affected by the sky color. This only scratches the surface of AO. You can play with the fall off, pixel cache, attenuation and other settings as well as combine ambient occlusion with the lamps in your scene. I hope this gives you good ideas for making your scenes more realistic.